Alien Resurrection. So what can be said about Alien Resurrection? Well, if the original movie poster is anything to go by, it rocks. Seriously, that's all it says. It rocks. Yeah, thanks for the deep and insightful analysis, People magazine. <laughs> Love it. Released in 1997, Alien Resurrection promised to be the rebirth the franchise needed, after some were left a little disappointed after Alien 3, where this time Ellen Ripley, once again played by Sigourney Weaver, has been cloned, so a government weapons division can get their hands on the alien that Ripley was pregnant with when she died at the end of Alien 3. However, the cloning process spliced the two species' genes together, where this new Ripley is now a half-human, half-alien hybrid. To make matters worse, some space pirates on a ship called the Betty enter the space station that is housing Ripley and the newly bred aliens, where once again, chaos is let loose, where the aliens do their thing and try to kill everyone. Oh, and there's also this weird human baby alien creature that thinks that Ripley is its mummy, and it's really weird. In this movie, which co-stars Renata Ryder and Ron Perlman, where unlike the third movie, which was trying to be deep and serious, is now more of a big, dumb popcorn movie. But the big question is, is this the movie the franchise needed to get back on track? Or was this just another failure that pales when compared to the first two alien movies? If this organization wanted an alien creature so bad, wouldn't it have just been easier, less time and cost effective to just go to one of the planets that we had previously been to and just get one? I mean, surely there must be records of the battle that took place in Aliens, right? Just go there and get one. But hey, I suppose if they did that, then we wouldn't have an alien resurrection. The movie that quite literally resurrected the series. So, 10 things, let's check it out and keep seatbelts fastened at all times. Number 10, Resurrection was going to focus on Newt. So it would have seemed that by the end of Alien 3, the series was now wrapped up, with the character of Ellen Ripley sacrificing herself into a fiery pit. However, that wasn't the case. 20th Century Fox were nowhere near ready to let go of the franchise yet. Despite the fact that according to Wikipedia, David Giller and Walter Hill, whom had been producers on the franchise ever since the first Alien movie, and were a huge driving force for the series' continuation, weren't too keen on making Alien Resurrection, feeling that it may kill off the franchise, but they were still on board to produce anyway. Regardless, there were several ideas floating around for a fourth Alien movie, one of them being a movie adaptation of Alien vs. Predator. Then it was decided to have a sequel focusing on Newt, the little girl from Aliens, who died in the credit sequence of Alien 3. In this new story which was going to revolve around the Newt character getting cloned, with this new Newt clone now being the focus of the series. And that made sense, as at that time Ripley had sacrificed herself, so it seemed like her character's timeline was done. That is until something happened. Number 9, From Buffy to Alien When it came to rejuvenating the Alien franchise with the fourth movie, 20th Century Fox turned to Joss Whedon, who at the time was increasingly reaching heights of success, thanks to co-writing Toy Story, but for also creating the very successful and popular Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series which was also made for 20th Century Fox. Whedon originally wrote a script that was based on the idea of Newt being brought back thanks to cloning. But 20th Century Fox then got cold feet, and at this point wanted to bring back the character of Ellen Ripley, as they felt that she was the main driving force behind the Alien franchise. So Whedon then had to make drastic changes to the script, to make Ripley the character who was brought back to life thanks to cloning, and thus the main character of the movie. Whedon apparently struggled to write a third act of the film, with supposedly five different endings taking place, one of them focusing on a battle against the alien creatures taking place on Earth. 
When reflecting on Alien 3, that movie has always been described as bleak, downbeat, morbid and depressing, and generally just lacking in hope and optimism. I think that Whedon was aware of these complaints and went out to make an Alien movie that was more fun and playful and tongue in cheek, with it feeling more like a Hollywood blockbuster roller coaster ride of a movie. According to IMDb, Whedon would go on to say that he feels that this was the wrong direction to take the movie into, especially considering the director directed the movie as if it was a serious movie. Well, yeah, Alien Resurrection is a silly movie, but unlike its predecessor, I still think it's lots of fun, even if it does have elements of being a wacky comedy, and in some cases, just plain wacky. So with Ripley now being written back into the Alien universe, the question is, can they get Sigourney Weaver to come back? Number 8. Weaver back for another showdown. As mentioned, in Alien Resurrection's early days of production, it was assumed that Ripley's story was over, due to the character's death at the end of Alien 3. During the early production when there were talks of making Alien vs Predator the fourth movie, Sigourney Weaver had no interest whatsoever in coming back. However, when Weaver was given the script to Alien Resurrection, she was enticed by this new side to Ellen Ripley, a Ripley who was a hybrid of being both human and alien, and not fully a trustworthy character. A character who may also be slightly sinister. This time, Weaver wasn't technically playing Ripley, not the one that we had previously seen, but rather Ripley 8, the eighth attempt at cloning the character, with this version being the closest resembling the original Ripley. However, there were supposedly other motivations that caused Reva to return. She supposedly said that she came back because they delivered a dump truck full of money at her house. <laughs> Weaver was paid $11 million for returning as Ripley for the fourth time, as well as having more creative control, making her a co-producer on the movie. Weaver, at that time, also felt that Resurrection returned the traditional alien spirit that the first two movies had created. Now, upon doing reading into Resurrection's backstory and history, there does seem to be this attitude at the time, this attitude in the production of, we need to redeem ourselves of Alien 3, and to try and get back the glory of Alien and Aliens. Number 7, Original Director. So the production needed to find a director who was able to bring the Alien rebirth onto the big screen. The first initial choice was Scottish director Danny Boyle, who at the time had just directed Train Spotting, and he did have discussions, but he basically just wasn't interested. Then New Zealand director Peter Jackson was approached, who at the time was making waves thanks to Heavenly Creatures and The Frighteners. But like Boyle, he too wasn't interested in directing an alien movie. Finally, French director Jean-Pierre Jeunet was approached, as in 1995 he had co-written and co-directed the science fiction fantasy The City of Lost Children, and at the time had just written the script for his movie Amelia. And so 20th Century Fox thought that maybe he was the right director for Alien Resurrection. And sadly, just as with Boyle and Jackson before him, he too wasn't really interested, as he felt that the series was finished, done, and dusted, all wrapped up. However, the $70 million budget that was given convinced him otherwise, so he came on board as Alien Resurrection's director. And say what you want to say about Alien Resurrection. At least unlike Alien 3, visually it does look like an alien movie. This looks like the world that we had seen in the first two films. Unlike 3, which looked like some weird art house movie full of brownish orangey colours. Number 6, Filming. Alien Resurrection was the first alien movie not to be filmed in England, supposedly because Sigourney Weaver didn't want to travel at the time. Hey, at this stage, the series needed Weaver more than Weaver needed the series, so if that's what she wants, I guess they're gonna have to honour that. The shoot took place at Fox Studios in Los Angeles, and lasted from October 1996 to February 1997. The production had trouble finding studio space at the time of filming, thanks to Starship Troopers, The Lost World Jurassic Park, and Titanic also being filmed at the studios at the same time. Wow, Fox's LA studios must have been crazy at that time. Despite the fact that a great deal of the movie is seeing characters running up and down space corridors, only two corridor sets were built. 
Also at the time of filming, director Jean-Pierre Jeunet barely spoke any English and needed a translator on set in order to give his directions to the cast and crew. One scene that was quite tricky to shoot was the underwater scene, where the ragtag group of survivors tried to swim away from the aliens. The scene was filmed in a tank, which apparently took about a week to fill up, and filming the scene would take a further three weeks. It was also felt that the water looked a little too transparent, so milk was added in order to make it look more realistic and cloudy. Ugh. The scene was actually quite difficult for Renata Ryder to film, as she had a terrible phobia of being underwater after a near drowning experience when she was 12, and she really wanted a stunt double to be used in her place, but her requests were rejected. And supposedly Ron Perlman nearly died while filming that scene as he banged his head on a ceiling sprinkler when he was trying to emerge out of the water, and it knocked him out, but thankfully he was rescued by members of the crew. Number 5. Recycled Prop There are some new faces who appear in the movie, expanding on the list of unique and interesting characters in the Alien universe. These include Renata Ryder as Cole, who at first seems to be a member of a pirate crew, but is in fact an android who is out to destroy Ripley 8. Ryder jumped at the chance to be in an alien movie with Sigourney Weaver, as she was a huge fan and wanted the street cred of being in an alien movie. Then there is Ron Perlman as Jonna, who is kind of like this movie's comic relief, but is also an epic badass. Brad Dorif from the Child's Play movies plays the really quirky Doctor, who is part of Ripley's cloning process. And yeah, he's just brilliantly odd and quirky as usual. Raymond Cruz plays Vincent, who starts off as a soldier, but ends up joining Ripley and the crew. Cruz would go on to play Tuco in the truly excellent Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul series, where he is truly terrifying in those shows. Resurrection also stars Michael Wincott as Frank, the captain of the spaceship Betty. When I was a kid, I always thought he sounded like he smoked way too many cigarettes, and I kind of feel like he dies a little too early in the film, as he was actually an interesting character. But oh well, at least they didn't use a spoon. There are also some familiar faces, including the Queen Alien, who was seen in the climax of Aliens. Yep, the bitch is back. This was actually the prop from the second movie, and in the early days of Resurrection's production, the crew had to go on something of a treasure hunt to try and track the puppet down, as they couldn't find it anywhere. Even the original moulds of the Alien Queen puppet were too beaten up beyond use, so they had to find that puppet. However, the Queen Alien puppet was eventually discovered at the hands of a memorabilia collector called Bob Burns, who let them use the puppet for filming. But it was still a little beaten up and needed repairs done, to which the crew did. In fact, there are lots of winks and nudges to the first two Alien movies in Resurrection. For example, at the very start of the movie, before Ripley 8 is revealed, we hear a brief piece of music of Jerry Goldsmith's score from the original Alien movie, which makes sense. But as the Ellen clone is revealed, we hear a voiceover by Sigourney Weaver say, My mummy always said there were no monsters. Not real ones, but there are. This is odd as this is a line of dialogue spoken by Newt in Aliens, and it really serves no purpose for the line to be mentioned here, as Newt has nothing to do with the story, nor is she ever brought up. I could only think that the line was left over from the original script, which was to focus on Newt. Uh, that's the only explanation I have. Number four, Troubled Alien Censoring. Alien Resurrection also introduces a new alien creature, the newborn child, which is a hybrid of human and alien genes, thanks to the Ripley clone splicing. Man, this thing is both repulsive and pitiful, a terrifying abomination which you also can't help but feel sorry for. I mean, on the one hand, he's vicious and kills, but on the other hand, he has a baby-like innocence. It's weird. This weird, monstrous turd gives me all manner of mixed emotions, from disgust to generally feeling bad for it. When it came to designing the newborn alien child, there was the idea to make it look like Sigourney Weaver and give it her features, but it was felt that that may be too similar to the alien creature from the movie Species. Although, I always felt that the eyes kind of looked like Sigourney Weaver's. Seriously, am I going crazy here, or does this thing have Weaver's eyes? 
Originally, this new alien-human hybrid was to have some rude bits on display for all to see, and that it was to resemble both male and female southern regions. However, upon viewing the final product, 20th Century Fox did decide that it didn't want to see the aliens bits and pieces, and so at the last minute they would digitally edit it out. If you want to see what that looks like, then go check it out on Wikipedia, I'm not posting the pictures here, as I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube. The creature had no CGI, wow, what a novel concept, and was mainly functioned through animatronics. Speaking of alien creatures, original alien designer H.R. Giger actually really enjoyed Alien Resurrection, but he supposedly didn't like the fact that he wasn't credited for being the designer of the alien creatures, and so he wrote an angry letter to the studio. Number 3. Deleted Scenes So there are several scenes that didn't make it into Alien Resurrection and ended up on the cutting room floor, some of which are quite fascinating. One of these included a scene that was deleted at the start of the movie, where after Ripley 8 has the alien chestburster taken out of her chest, we see her getting sewn back up, where Ripley breaks the arm of the surgeon who is operating on her. This is setting up quite early on that this Ripley is different and slightly dangerous, and maybe not to be trusted. But I personally prefer how it naturally sort of plays out in the movie. Seeing Ripley be this violent so early on may have left some people having difficulty connecting to her character. My favourite of the deleted scenes is an alternative ending, where we see the Betty spaceship actually land on Earth, which looks like a battleground wasteland, almost like a graveyard, where Ripley and Cole contemplate the idea of fleeing and getting lost in this new world, in order to avoid the military, where it's then revealed that they're in a post-apocalyptic Paris. It's a beautiful scene, and I actually wish that it stayed in. And it's just nice seeing Ripley getting back to Earth at long last. It's taken her since 1979 to finally get there. Speaking of deleted ideas, on IMDb it's explained that Bill Murray was the original choice to play the movie's big bad, Dr. Wren, which would have been something of a reunion for Murray and Weaver, who also starred in Ghostbusters together. But that part ended up going to J.E. Freeman. Number 2. Failed Sequels It seems that Alien Resurrection was intended to really ignite the Alien franchise back on track and to make the Alien series mainstream again. Alien Resurrection was accompanied by a PlayStation video game and a comic book adaptation by Dark Horse, who published all the other Alien-related comics. There was also plans for more Alien movies to follow up Alien Resurrection with. I can remember reading an article in a movie magazine at the time that Alien Resurrection came out, and it claimed that Sigourney Weaver was already being pursued to return for a fifth Alien movie, which was really unprecedented for an Alien movie to go into production at the time of the previous movie only just being released. Now, I don't know if this is true or how reliable this article was, but it claims that there were issues signing on Sigourney Weaver, as the role would require her to shave her head again like in Alien 3, and she just did not want to do that. According to Wikipedia, Joss Whedon had written an Alien 5 script, which was to be a direct sequel to Resurrection, and was to solely take place on Earth this time round, and that Weaver didn't return as she did not like this script, and felt that the movie shouldn't be taking place on Earth, but rather the same creepy planet that we saw in the first Alien movie. Then Aliens director James Cameron himself started to get to work on a fifth Alien movie, and was in the stages of developing a story for this fifth adventure. However, Cameron then heard that 20th Century Fox was planning an Alien vs Predator movie, and this made Cameron immediately abandon his idea and not to look back. He felt that an Alien vs Predator movie would be disastrous likening it to Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, in that it's like the studio taking their franchises that they own and playing them off against each other, which he felt would invalidate the franchise. So despite both Josh Whedon and James Cameron creating their own potential fifth Alien movies, Alien would eventually return seven years later for Alien vs Predator. So the question is, was it worth it? Well, that's the story for another episode. Number 1. Resurrecting Aliens Well, at least trying to. The Alien franchise may have seemed like it ran its course, but was brought back to life in November 1997 with the release of Alien Resurrection. 
Finally, fans could go on one last adventure with Ripley, despite her dying at the end of the previous movie. Resurrection would go on to make over $161 million on a $70 million budget. It was the least successful Alien movie in North America, but like Alien 3, had greater success overseas. The movie was opened up at the number two spot in the box office, beaten by something even more horrific and terrifying, that being, of course, Flubber. The reviews at the time for Resurrection were actually quite positive. A lot of critics felt that the movie was a huge improvement over Alien 3, and claimed that although Resurrection felt silly and didn't have the stakes or emotional heart of the first two movies, it was still lots of fun, with it being observed as more of a B-movie. The Radio Times called it very graphic and bloody, and I'll go along with that. This is definitely the most gruesome entry in the series. Definitely the most icky, and the weirdest for that matter. In later years though, I feel like Alien Resurrection slipped into being alongside Alien 3, as being two movies in the franchise that aren't very good and don't live up to their predecessors. In fact, to me, the Alien franchise comes in twos. There are the first two movies, which are masterpieces, the second two, which were misguided and couldn't live up to their former glories, then the Versus Predator entries, which were wasted opportunities, and then the Ridley Scott prequels. Whatever they were supposed to be. I think Alien 3 and Resurrection are kind of like a yin and yang of each other, where one suffered, the other improved, which then causes problems in other areas which the other movie does do better in and vice versa. Alien 3 is a doom and gloom depressing movie, and Resurrection feels like an antidote counteraction to that, where it's trying to be fun, and maybe goes a little too overboard with how silly it is. So whereas Alien 3 is so miserable and gloomy, you can still take the drama seriously. Resurrection is by far more fun, with a more enjoyable, carefree vibe, but it's hard to take seriously and borderlines almost being comical. Look, all said and done, I don't think Alien Resurrection is a masterpiece, or remotely lives up to the first two movies, but I still find it to be lots of fun, and more watchable than the third movie. I actually put up a picture of the Alien Resurrection poster on the Minty Comedic Arts Facebook page, saying that to me, Resurrection is a guilty pleasure, and that I do oddly enjoy it. And there actually were tons of comments from people saying that they hated the movie, and that they felt that Alien 3 was better, and that it at least wrapped everything up, and that it should have been left there. So clearly, I'm not in sync with the main Alien fandom. But I can't help it! Despite its problems, to me, Alien Resurrection is a very enjoyable movie, and it is a complete fun thrill ride of a guilty pleasure. And for all of those who really don't like Resurrection, I get it. I'm not excusing the movie at all. Like, I realise why quite a few people don't like it. But I guess it just has a special place to me. After all, Alien Resurrection feels like the Alien movie that came out for me, as I was 13 years old when it was released, which is just the right age. As when I saw it, my 13 year old self was like, heck yeah, look at all these people getting ripped apart and killed. So, I don't know, maybe there's that nostalgia factor for me too. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, resurrection rocks, apparently. See ya!